Hey guys, Alexei from Ace5 Studios. And there was a question on a forum or a YouTube video. Someone said, can you explain to me nodes like I'm five? So I'm like, that's a good idea. So this is nodes like you're five. Why would you want to use nodes? So this is the scene if you watch my other tutorial where I get this spiky ball thing going on. Oh, it looks something like this. It's taking a while to clean up, but nevertheless, go have a look at the tutorial. You remember what it looks like. Let's actually turn off global illumination here because we don't need it that bright. Oof, and turn on some lights. And basically there was something along these lines. I'm not sure why there's no color, but anyway, my point is, let's say the client says, or you just decide you want to try a different noise pattern. You don't like the spikes, you want there to be more spikes. So you go to displacement and you get your noise shader and you're like, well, now I want it to be like 100%. So there's a lot more spikes and you switch it and there's more spikes. But now you realize the problem is now your, uh, your light, your luminance and your color doesn't match up the spikes. It's now still where it was. So you have to grab this shader and you have to copy it. And then you have to go to your, wherever it is, your color thing. And you have to go in there and you have to paste it and hope that it pastes correctly. Like right now, your paste shader. And now the colors should match up. Yeah, the colors are matching up. So you can see the tips are green, but the luminance isn't. So you have to go back to your luminance and open it and paste it here as well. And now it matches up. Then you're like, well, I liked it better the way it was before. You have to go back and change everything, or if you wanted to try a different noise. But with nodes, I recreated pretty much the same material here with nodes, and you can see it here. And basically, uh, the great thing about this is that I have one noise, and I plug it into the colorizer to get the colors, and I plug it into a different colorizer to control the luminance. And now when I change the noise, it will change everything. So if I have this thing here and then suddenly I'm here like, well, let's try different noise altogether. Let's just try some electric noise. And everything changes and still matches up and that's very big. So global scale like 50. And now things match up and I can adjust these very easily without, um, you know, adjusting the underlying. So this thing clearly needs to be dragged all the way up. All the way up. There you go. And this all changes instantaneously throughout your hierarchy. And this could be for any kind of maps that you use. You know, if you're using some kind of height map um, in your materials or anything like that. And, you know, I'll show you how to build them. It's pretty easy. Um, I usually like, you can build this all manually, but for me, it's kind of, it's easy if I just start with a, let's delete this. Um, let's turn off the render here for a second and let's make up. You can make your own material and you can get all the reflections and everything, but honestly, the Uber material is great because when you create it, um, yeah, so you have this one material here. I rearranged my interface because something glitched a bit <laughs> with the node UI. And basically here you can select if you want to show all ports or just connected ports. Uh, but this is not really unnecessary because now when you open this, you basically have a very similar setup in the material as you do with your standard material. So for example, I know that I want the diffuse, I want reflection, and I want emission, and I want displacement. And now you can go and open these and they're pretty much the same thing. Except here you have to plug in a value through some other means. You can't just, you know, press the drop down menu. So let's turn off um, diffuse for the time being channels. Let's, I mean the emission, we don't need the emission right now. So let's, let's put this material onto our sphere here and let's go and drag some stuff on. So noise, so you press C and you type noise and you go noise and there you go, you have your noise and you click on it and you can change the noise. Projection is UV, make sure it's there. And let's pick our noise, which I prefer Booyah, but dense doesn't look too bad. Anyway, and let's just, on this material, you can either, you can either drag, oops, you can either drag the results into here and then find the channel in the place that you want, but an easier way, don't forget that solo thing makes it, no, it's nice, it's solo makes, you can see this channel on the object in the viewport, that's very handy. And now I can scale it down and, so if I change it to like 50, I can see what it looks like. It's pretty nice. Let's drag the low clip up a bit. 
not bad, not bad. Useful features. So let's unsolo that. So basically I get my Uber material and I'm like, well, I want to feed this into the displacement. Pick value and connect nodes and existing nodes and just pick noise one. And it automatically finds the right place and plugs it in. And if you do a render region here, you have your displacement going on. Now, what you probably want to also add here is you want the sub polygon displacement, probably three is enough. And now you should get a bit more detailed. There you go. We've got our detail going on and sweet. And let's turn that off. And now my colorizer, so I just press C and I go colorize. There you go. And I will drag this here thing in here and I will drag this into, once again, I can do it manually, but I think it's easier to just click on this and find the diffuse and then go here, connect nodes, existing node and colorize one. There you go. And now you can see the colors are what I want to be, but here I just change this to my um, to colors that I want. So let's go make this pink and let's make this blue because you know on brand that pink should be a bit more. Yeah, there you go. Let's give it a bit of white at the tips. And now we hit render. Oops. Render region, come back, there you go. Render region is back. And we have our little ball. And if we want to increase the displacement, just go here and displacement, um, displacement and displacement height. And let's make it like 50. And right now it's intensity centered, but it still gets the point across. And now you have one channel controlling both these things and the same thing you do for the luminance. And this is a very big time saver when you're adjusting stuff and trying things out and seeing how they look. So right now I can, you know, I can just copy this one, control C, control V and let's go, I'll make this thing nice and black and this thing will be white and this thing will be some kind of off yellow. Drag this up a bit and plug this in here and then get my emission here and turn on channels and emission and in the emission color we just connect node exists to node and colorize too and there you go we have our little glowing tips but probably need a different noise for that so let's try a different noise let's go well, we can try luca i think that could work there you go you have some nice spikes there and now we can see what it looks like and it's clearly too much noise. So we just grab our colorize again and just drag this guy to the right. So it's more of the tips and not the whole thing and wait for the render. And there you go. Change the noise and everything, you know, gets fixed and let's go. Right now I want to make the whole thing scale up and global scale. Let's make like 250. And there you go, see, and everything matches up, all the tips match up, everything matches up. So this is like super handy. And also you can animate it like this um, and it'll animate all of them throughout. So you don't have to bother keyframing every noise in every single channel. So this is why node-based is super handy. It's also handy for like working on, you know, cleaning up materials and just, yep. So hopefully this explains it to you, the usefulness of nodes like your five. This was Alexei from Ace5 Studios. Be sure to check my website for more tutorials and reviews and check out my rig characters and all kinds of other fun stuff. There's a free bony and a beefy rig too.